Soren Kierkegaard was a Danish philosopher, theologian, poet, social critic, and religious author, regarded by some philosophers as the father of existentialism. Born in 1813 in Copenhagen, he lived at the end of the Enlightenment. This era ushered in enormous advances in technology and human understanding. The thinking of that time was that life's biggest problems, including what a human's true self is, could be solved through objective means, such as through the application of logic and science. Kierkegaard not only disagreed with this idea, but for that matter, with much of what the accepted status quo in the literature, philosophy, and religion of his day was. Much of his philosophy centered around the concept of how one lives as a single individual. As he wrote in Concluding Unscientific Postscript to Philosophical Fragments, subjectivity is truth, and truth is subjectivity. An astute thinker, he of course agreed that science and objective facts are important. But prominent systematic philosophers of his time, such as Hegel, weren't really acknowledging that there exist deeper, subjective truths, or truths that separate ourselves from other individuals out there. And what exactly does he mean by subjective truth? Well, take for example the idea of whether we should become a professional musician as a career. Objective facts may tell us things like our average salary or the approximate amount of hours we need to practice each day. But to really understand what it means to be a musician full-time means we have to experience it for ourselves. We have to pick up a guitar and try to get a music gig to understand if we're going to be doing this for a living full-time. This unique focus on the individual's lived experience led him, by some scholars, to be considered the father of existentialism. Existentialism is the philosophy that the world has no intrinsic meaning and that individuals alone are responsible for their actions, decisions, and purpose. For Kierkegaard, this responsibility was of utmost importance because our internal salvation hanged in the balance of how we act and the life we ultimately choose to live. A profound religious man, Kierkegaard believed God would ultimately judge who we become as a single individual through the course of our actions. To understand Kierkegaard's work a little better is to understand the man behind the writing. Soren's father, Michael, was a wealthy but deeply melancholy man who took his guilt and stern religious beliefs out on Soren and his seven children. Soren lamented that he had been born old and never had a fun, carefree childhood. Despite his business success, Michael Kierkegaard believed he was cursed and his children would all die before the age attained by Jesus, age 33. It turned out that young Soren would indeed be surrounded by death early in life as all but one of his siblings would not live to see that age. In 1840, Soren became engaged to Regina Olsen. Despite writing how deeply in love he was with her, he mysteriously broke off the engagement. And whether it was a sexual indiscretion, a religious experience calling him to be celibate, or just not wanting to support a wife and child financially, scholars can only speculate as to why he really did it. However, it was a serious turning point in his life, as it set a course for him to, to fully dedicate himself to writing and philosophy. Not only that, it further established him as this type of outside figure since he would never marry during his life. Soren wrote a prolific amount, his most uh, well-known works being Either Or, Fear and Trembling, and The Sickness Unto Death. He creatively used a method of indirect communication, writing under various pseudonyms to convey this sense of personal responsibility to the reader, to make up his mind and sever ties with a perceived expert or all-wise authority figure. Sometimes referred to as the poet philosopher, his writings were filled with passion, irony, and parables instead of the dry analytical discourse of other intellectuals of his time. For example, in his work Either Or, he burst forth, If you marry, you will regret it. If you do not marry, you will also regret it. If you marry or if you do not marry, you will regret both. Whether you marry or you do not marry, you will regret both. Laugh at the world's follies, you will regret it. Weep over them, you will also regret it. If you laugh at the world's follies or if you weep over them, you will regret both. Whether you laugh at the world's follies or you weep over them, you will regret both. When one reflects inward and begins examining their life, it leads to some unsettling questions and topics that Kierkegaard wasn't afraid to explore. Two examples found in his works include death and angst or despair. Death is an objective fact that everyone is aware of, but Kierkegaard believed that no one truly understood death and thought about it, which was needed to live a life of passion. The truth is we could be struck down at any moment. Our life ended in a flash. However, the herd goes along not giving a second thought to this, living in death denial. Angst for Kierkegaard was unfocused fear, or specifically a dizziness of freedom. When one truly looks inward and sees how much freedom and possibilities one has, it's anxiety-producing. He asks us to imagine a man standing on top of a cliff looking down at the possibilities he could do and become in his life. The longer he stands, the more dread he feels. As he wrote in The Concept of Anxiety, 
Anxiety may be compared with dizziness. He whose eye happens to look down into the yawning abyss becomes dizzy. But what is the reason for this? It is just as much in his own eye as in the abyss, for suppose he has not looked down. Hence, anxiety is dizziness of freedom, which emerges when the spirit wants to posit the synthesis, and freedom looks down into its own possibility, laying hold of finiteness to support itself. Despite its negative feeling, angst is important as it leads us to personal responsibility and awareness of our choices in life independent from what others want us to believe. It brings us from a state of unselfconscious immediacy to self-conscious reflection. So what's the specific process for becoming a single individual? What's the end goal for Kierkegaard? Scholars believe we can categorize his writing into three levels of individual existence one must pass through. These are the aesthetic, the ethical, and the religious. Stage one is the aesthetic life, a life defined simply by experiencing pleasures, like sensuous desires and intellectual enjoyment. A good way to combat life's boredom, the individual soon realizes he or she needs more substance and purpose in life. That's where stage two, the ethical life, comes in. To function as a mature society, we all have to establish good and bad rules to be followed and judged by. We understand that we're an integrated part of society and that there is a purpose greater than oneself out there. However, you can still enjoy aesthetic pleasures in life. It's just that ethical principles now supersede the aesthetic. For instance, the aesthetic excitement and passion of a new marriage can quickly fade. However, by acting morally and taking care of one's spouse, you can learn for yourself that there are things more meaningful than just service level pleasures and excitement. However, to truly live life as a single individual, one must take another step and adopt number three, the religious life. For Kierkegaard, living the religious life was something almost no one did and was considered uh, by him to be the highest plan of existence. See, truly finding God for him doesn't happen by mindlessly following ethical rules, social guidelines, and regurgitating church dogma. True religion comes when we have a personal commitment and relationship to the Christian God alone and are willing to supersede ethical principles for God. In Fear and Trembling, Kierkegaard, writing under pseudonym, gives Abraham as an example of someone who reached the religious life. Rather than follow normative ethical rules and spare a son as murder is wrong, Abraham looks inward and understands God requires deeper inner commitment more than just following rules. Being rational, of course, Kierkegaard understood that this isn't a simple task. Christian teachings are paradoxical, after all, asserting that God as Christ is both 100% human and 100% God. Confronted with such a paradox, one can either logically reject the idea and take offense, or live by faith and believe by virtue of the absurd. The absurd here, a concept that appears throughout Kierkegaard's work, is seen to be an enhancement of faith, something that we all must embrace. When we suspend our ethical, rational beliefs for religious ones like Abraham did, we embrace the teleological suspension of the ethical and take the leap of faith. Here we become what he called a knight of faith, someone who has transcended ethical and rational objectivity for subjectivity and placed complete faith in himself and God acting freely from the world. So that was just a very brief introduction to Kierkegaard as there's far more to him and his work and I encourage you to read some of his writings for yourself if any of this seemed interesting. Now today most philosophers and those in academia would disagree with Kierkegaard's religious conclusions but history has greatly benefited from him. If you're someone struggling with feelings of despair, anxiety, meaning in life, and wrestling with your own mortality and inevitable death, Kierkegaard, if you were here, might say, good job, man. These feelings, although uncomfortable, indicate that you're on the right path toward understanding yourself and becoming your unique self. You've started the uh, essential journey inward and are separating yourself from the masses and herd mentality, so don't feel too bad. Now, if you like this video, uh, please make sure to subscribe for more using the link in the description below and click the notification bell to receive updates when new videos come out and give this video a like if you liked it uh, as that helps it get seen in the YouTube search results. So thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon.